Hello and welcome to this video on how to obtain a satora bendler correction for non-normality when estimating confirmatory factor analysis or structural equation modeling in the m software. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. Usually I talk about multivariate statistical methods including factor analysis, structural equation modeling, multi-level modeling and latent class latent profile analysis. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as courses that I offer for Quantfish. In this video, I want to show you how you can obtain a satora bendler correction when you estimate a confirmatory factor analysis or structural equation model in the m software. Why would you want to do this? Oftentimes when we run structural equation models or factor models, we have to deal with non-normal data and the standard estimation methods that we use in factor analysis and SEM is maximum likelihood estimation. Now maximum likelihood estimation tends to give you incorrect fit statistics, incorrect standard errors and tests of significance when the data are not multivariate normally distributed. So when, you're, um, when you have non-normal data, when you don't meet the assumption of a multivariate normal distribution, then you can end up with fit statistics that are incorrect as well as with parameter significance tests and confidence intervals that may be incorrect. And there's an easy way to adjust for that while still using maximum likelihood estimation and that is using a correction method such as the Satora Bendler scaled chi-square and Satora Bendler adjusted standard error. So what this does is it will still give you the same parameter estimates that you would get with default or standard maximum likelihood estimation but it adjusts the test statistics such as the chi-square test of model fit and it adjusts your standard errors for the parameter estimate so that you will get corrected tests of significance as well as corrected confidence intervals if you're looking at confidence intervals. And so this is a very straightforward method for dealing with non-normality. Then you don't have to think about data transformations or using alternative estimation methods that may not work well in smaller samples and you get the regular maximum likelihood parameter estimate. So let's take a look at how this correction can be obtained in the m software. You can see here that I have a simple data example with four variables and I have a two-factor model. So it's a CFA model where I have a factor F1 that's measured by two indicators and I have a factor F2 that's measured by two indicators and those factors can be correlated. You could also, you could do it the same in the same way for a structural equation model where for example F2 would be regressed on F1. It would work in the same way. And so the only thing that you have to specify here to obtain this correction is you have to include the analysis option estimator equals MLM where this overrides the M plus default estimation method for continuous variables in factor analysis and SEM which would simply be estimator equals ML. So uncorrected maximum likelihood estimation would be used by default in M plus if you didn't include the analysis command. And so now by including the analysis command and picking a specific estimator, we override the M plus defaults and MLM provides that Satora Bendler correction. Then when we take a look at it, you will see that the output looks pretty much exactly the same as for regular ML estimation. You can see here that the estimator that was chosen was MLM. And then when we scroll down further, um, the statistics here all look the same as they would normally. But in the model fit information section, you can see that the chi-square value here has a little asterisk and 
there is an explanation here for that test statistic that says the chi-square value for MLM, MLMV, MLR and other estimators cannot be used for chi-square difference testing in the regular way. MLM, MLR and so on. Chi-square difference testing is described on the M plus website. So this is because now this chi-square is adjusted by the scaling correction factor for MLM and that has to be taken into account when you calculate a chi-square difference for nested model testing. So this means that you can still do chi-square difference testing if you want to compare nested models with a chi-square difference test. However, then you have to take that scaling correction factor into account and it's actually quite easy to do that and it's described on the stat model dot com website, the M plus website. You get the regular fit statistics as well here adjusted for non normality. So you would you get the same information that you would for uncorrected ML and then in the model results section, you actually don't see anything. Um, you don't see that there's been uh, a correction applied to the standard errors. The parameter estimates here in that column estimate will be exactly the same even so no matter whether you choose ML or MLM you'll get the same values for the estimate column so those point estimates of the parameter estimates are unchanged but the standard errors are adjusted and then as a result also the test statistics the Z statistics where we divide the estimate by its standard error for a test of significance these are also then adjusted because they're based on the adjusted standard errors in the second column and as a result then also the p-value for the test of significance for the null hypothesis test that the parameter is zero in the population, those are also adjusted. And so that's the goal of that Satora Bendler correction to adjust the fit statistics and the parameter standard errors and significance test statistics for non normality, which may lead to bias in those statistics. Now, the Satora Bendler correction method has one downside and that is it cannot be applied when there's missing data. And so that's something that we almost always have. In this case, I have a simulated data set here and I have complete data, but that is rare. So typically we would have missing data. So what could you do in that case if you did uh, choose MLM, then M plus will tell you, I'm sorry, I can only do this with listwise deletion. Do you want to do listwise deletion with missing values? And then typically you would think, no, that's not a good idea uh, to use listwise deletion uh, of missing scores. I have videos on this channel as well uh, talking about that, why it's not a good idea to apply listwise deletion with missing data and it's much better to use something like full information, maximum likelihood estimation. And so then you'd be in this awkward situation to have to think about how to deal with that. And so therefore um, in M plus actually we would typically not use the Satora Bendler correction because the typical case is we do have missing values, but instead we would use an estimator that is asymptotically equivalent to the Satora Bendler correction with complete data, and that is MLR. So the MLR option also provides robust test statistics and standard errors when there is non-normal data, and it can be used with missing data. So in that situation, then you would not use estimator MLM, but instead you would use MLR and that's also a correction for non-normality that can be used with um, missing data as well. So if you had missing scores, then that could still be applied and you could still use um, you could include the missing values, you could use full information, maximum likelihood estimation, and you could still obtain a correction for non-normality. So typically that's what we would actually do with non-normal data. If we had any missings, we would probably opt for the MLR estimator. I hope you found this video useful to learn about how to deal with non-normal data in CFA and SEM when using M+. If you did, then please hit the like button, 
check out the description for additional resources, subscribe to this channel and if you like leave a comment in the comment section and I'll see you next time.